Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and SpaceX watchers have noted that things have become very busy down in Boca Chica, Texas. Now, I don't want this episode to be just a bunch of Twitter pictures, but unfortunately, all the best pictures turned up on Twitter. Primarily from Elon Musk, this is his Tatooine junkyard, and you can see in the foreground there a, a hinge structure to support the wing system. He has a bulkhead getting installed on these Starship prototypes. Uh, it looks like they may have actually brought workers from Florida over to Boca Chica. They're rushing to finish this before uh, a presentation by the end of the week. Most notably, the fins started appearing, and they are completely different than the Starship that was designed or described last year. It looks like there's now only going to be two of these on the rear instead of three. It also looks like they are not going to have the landing legs. Indeed, this has been confirmed that it's going to have separate airframe mounted legs. There will be four fins, but these are more like air brakes. They're designed to fly perpendicular to the flow of air so that they will act as air brakes and, you know, they will adjust the angle on these to make sure the center of pressure is at the center of mass. And so these will move up and down very quickly to control the descent. Elon also tells us that all three Raptor engines have been installed. It is not clear whether these Raptors have actually been through the test stand process at McGregor. They could have come, they could be placeholders, they could be ready to fly, but there's no guarantee that on September 28th that they're actually just going to fire up those engines and let this thing fly. Also, we get some nice video showing these really, really shiny uh, you know, stainless steel covers. I think these are racetrack covers from up the side of the spacecraft. And of course, Elon isn't the only source. We have the fans that are living down there. Uh, Mary, Boca Chica gal, she was the first person to tweet out these images of the new fin design, which is completely different. Again, I say fins, they're more like air brakes. Uh, also, Austin Bernard has been uh, posting stuff. And we, in a couple of these pictures, we get to see you know the, ra the Raptors. We get to see the raceway running up the side. That's the cable conduit. Well, I say it's cables, but it could be plumbing, could be anything. But it is a basically a tunnel that runs up the side of the rocket. Now, this protrudes out, and they've got aerodynamic covers being added. But these aerodynamic covers are asymmetric. The curve away from the uh, vehicle is sharper on one side. So that leads me to believe this is an aerodynamic feature designed to, uh, well, basically augment the stability. Perhaps it causes the airflow to detach as it is passing over this. That kind of disruption to the airflow at hypersonic speeds will make it very hot there, and the photos we've seen have made this section particularly shiny and well-polished. Anyway, look, there's a lot of fan images out there. What I'm really saying is, this week you should definitely be paying attention to what is going on down in Boca Chica, because they are rushing like mad to make this thing ready for Elon's presentation on the 28th. I want to kind of just show you how I think it's going to work, and this is me, of course, flying it in Kerbal Space Program, because that's what I do. This is using the Breaking Ground mod, and I've adjusted the two fins at the rear so that I can adjust the angle of these two fins, and you see that I'm pretty much holding this at 90 degrees to the airflow. Now, I can adjust these fins in and out, and I'm trying to do it so that the pitch angle maintains in the middle so I don't need to use any other force to keep the angle consistent. So a real Starship would have a real-time computer running this and wouldn't be subject to my half-assed key presses to keep everything straight. That being said, just by adjusting those rear two flaps, I was able to make it all the way through re-entry and into the descent phase when I went subsonic. And I know, I think in hypersonic regimes it works pretty well, but I think the way the aerodynamics work in Kerbal Space Program may not be perfectly representative of reality. Either that or Elon has tested on better hardware and better software than I have. Because what I found is that once it went subsonic, the wings started to generate some sort of a lift which began to cause rotation of the spacecraft. It made it very hard to control in the roll and the yaw axis. And I will admit right away that Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut, spent a lot of time on this doing it properly on Saturday, and he managed to get this thing controllable and landed. 
I, on the other hand, had to go and drink beer at a community fundraiser for my kids' school, so I am actually not sober at all. This is what I did. I'm sure I could do a little better, but uh, you know, mad props to Tim for actually getting it flyable. After a lot of experimentation, it turned out that the only way I could really reliably bring it back under control was to let it drop into a rearward facing motion and then fire up those engines. And actually these are the vector engines, they have way too much thrust vectoring so they can actually move the spacecraft into unstable regimes. But you know, even with my manual flying, I was pretty much able to put it down and then the physics on the landing gear betrayed me and destroyed the spacecraft, but I'm going to call this a win. I mean, that's not bad for, you know, half an hour of not entirely sober testing, and we will see the full scoop uh, towards the end of the week, we hope. But elsewhere, of course, SpaceX isn't just about their Starship. They are, of course, trying to fly the Crew Dragon, and it just came out today that the FCC, they have made an application to the FCC to cover the requirements for an in-flight abort test starting November 23rd. So that is the earliest that they can perform an in-flight abort test, and this permit is good for like six months, so that's well into next year. Hopefully, they will get to fly it sooner rather than later, and they will actually get to fly the real spacecraft, maybe before the end of the year. It's not clear. Obviously, they're still competing against Boeing. Boeing haven't uh, set up a launch date yet. Indeed, it looks like their launch date may, f uh, they may slip. But in the last week or so, we have seen a bunch of different videos and articles promoting SpaceX's parachute tests. And I'm not sure if this is directly a response to the rumors of bad parachute problems earlier in the year. But, uh, you know, the videos show the testing from all sorts of uh, conditions and angles. And it does look like they have a rather good parachute system actually working now. Designing a spacecraft with enough parachutes so that it lands slowly is relatively easy compared to figuring out how to deploy all those parachutes and not have any of the cables or any of the fabric exceed its operational parameters. And when they're deploying, there's all sorts of extra high transient forces that get generated. Not just as the parachute initially catches, but as the parachutes, as the canopies essentially balloon out, expand, and bump up against each other. I think people forget that most of the capsules where the people have flown in have used single parachutes. If you look at Soyuz, Mercury, and Gemini, they're all using single parachutes. Apollo had three parachutes, and that was not a trivial problem for them to solve. And I imagine that SpaceX is going through the same problems, as well as, to be clear, Boeing and the Orion team. Anyway, I will have a full analysis of Elon's presentation about the new and upgraded Starship. And we're wondering whether he will talk more about the super, super Starship, which is going to be twice the diameter. It probably won't be any, any taller because, you know, they still have to fit enough engines on it. But an 18 meter wide rocket does seem rather ridiculous and yet you know Elon's talking about it in quite serious tones especially when you consider how fast they're actually developing the Starship prototypes that we see in Boca Chica and in Florida. So yeah watch out for that towards the end of the week. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.